What's up guys, my name is Dan Danny or Daniel. I draw cards and turn them into 3D prints using Hue Forge and I also do Hue Forge tutorials for all of you. Today we're gonna talk about three part stained glass Hue Forges. My last tutorial on stained glass Hue Forges did so well and I asked my Patreon members what they wanted to see next and the overwhelming answer was the three part stained glass Hue Forges. If you didn't see that tutorial, I would highly recommend going and watching that before you watch this one. I wanna give a huge shout out to my man Tom. He is the pioneer of this stained glass method using Hue Forge. I'll have a link down to his maker world if you wanna go check out some of his stained glass hue forges that he's done. The main difference between two part and three part stained glass hue forges are that two part, we broke up the color spaces and printed those individually and stacked those. With three part, we're gonna get a little bit more complicated. This is a little bit more advanced. You have to know a little bit of color theory to do this. In most cases, we're gonna separate these images into red, yellow, and blue color spaces. Because for example, whenever you stack red on top of yellow and light shines through it backlit, it gives you an orange color. By now, if you've been doing hue forge for any amount of time, you're probably used to blending colors a little bit. With your front lit hue forges. This is no different. It's just a little bit more challenging because hue forge doesn't render how these are going to stack. So for this, hue forge isn't giving us all the answers. We're gonna have to use our imagination just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about what I mean. So let's get into today's video. I don't get it. Neither do I. Oh my God. Before we get started, I wanna say if you didn't watch the video where I took this image and turned it into stained glass, I highly recommend it. I'll link it here. Go check that video out because it will give you a basis of what we're doing as far as image editing and it'll show you the ropes of what we're doing here. So in that first video as a recap, we took both of those color spaces and divided the image into two separate images so that we could hue forge each of these and then stack them together. We didn't blend any colors within these. All we did was separate the color spaces. And like I said, we stacked them on top of each other. So that way light could pass through it very easily. But what happens if we have an image like today, you can see here that we have red, we have blue and we have green. So we have RGB. We've also got this yellow and kind of an orange color. And then we've also got these teals. So in this particular case, we're going to make three separate hue forges, but we're not gonna separate these colors outright because everybody knows if you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. Likewise, if you mix red and yellow, you'll get orange. So we have to keep that in mind whenever we're gonna make a three-part hue forge. There's a lot more thinking and there's a lot more involved with making these because we're going to actively use the light that is shining through from behind to blend colors. Whenever we print these, we're gonna have a solid blue, a solid yellow, and a solid red hue forge. And then we'll be able to stack those. And like I said, whenever the light hits it from behind, that's when we'll get the blending that we're looking for. So there are a lot of things that we have to keep in mind and doing it this way is much more complicated because there's a lot of playing around that you have to do and a lot of testing that you have to do in order to get your results to look the way that you want them to. For this video, I'm gonna speed up while I do the prep work for the images and then we'll talk about it once I get them separated. So sit back and enjoy and I'll see you back here in a second. So something you'll learn is that when you're doing stained glass hue forges, the pre-processing is the majority of the time to do this. Separating these images into three parts could be 30 to 45 minutes. It just depends on how versed you are and whatever editing software you're using. I'm sure that somebody was watching that time lapse and was cringing the entire time. Anyways, so, so what we're doing here is we've split it up. In the top right, you see that we have our red color zone. That's gonna be a red and clear hue forge. The middle, that's going to be a strictly yellow and clear hue forge. And then at the top left, that's gonna be our strictly blue and clear hue forge. Now, why did I leave green on the two left ones? And why did I leave yellow on the right? So the way that I plan on stacking this is we're going to have red at the top 
And so everything that is colored is going to be red when we use standard mode. And then everything here on the yellow hue forge, it's going to be different colors of yellow. And we left the green on it because we know that whenever light shines through this whole blue, because this is going to print out completely blue. I'm not going to put any green in this, but it's going to print out completely blue. And then we're going to have all those green areas stacked with this yellow because this is all going to be yellow. There's not going to be any green in either of these. There's not going to be any orange in either of these necessarily. So like these orange bits are not gonna look orange. This is probably gonna look a little more orange than what we're seeing on the screen. I'm probably gonna use a brighter yellow and then have this red tone make it look this deeper yellow-ish orange color. So again, I'm just, these are things that I'm keeping in mind whenever I'm making these images and pre-processing them is how do I want these to stack? How are these going to blend whenever I stack them? In that first one, I made them pretty thick. I think I left them around two millimeters if I'm not mistaken. And this one, since we're only using two or three filaments, I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter that way light has the best chance of passing through and so that we get more blending so with that let's get into hue forge we're going to start hue forging these three and then we will print them out and we will see how they turned out so i think that we'll start out with our base which is going to be blue now, when we first come into Hue Forge, like I said, we're gonna thin these up because we're using three different Hue Forges. We're physically gonna stack three Hue Forges. So we wanna give light the best chance of getting through it. Even if we use high TD filaments, we still just wanna help it out here. So first of all, come up here to the top left. We're gonna click backlit. That's gonna invert everything. And we can probably come down. Our base thickness at 0.48 is fine. We'll probably come down to 1.8. To eight, that's probably okay. Now I'm gonna use Polymaker Natural for the base color. Let's bring this up to cold white. There we go. I'm gonna use Polymaker Natural. If you have Pet G, just you can use transparent Pet G if you want to, or just any kind of transparent base color that you may have. But Polymaker Natural definitely works well. I needed to turn negative off so that this works the way that I was intending for it to work. So we'll keep that down low. Bring this blue up. Honestly, we might want to use a deeper blue as well. So I, I have chromonal deep sea blue, which is like a 6TD. You can see that whenever we backlit this, it shines through really well because it is a little bit higher than a mid TD, I would say. So we can add in potentially a lower TD blue, like bamboo basic blue, to darken up some of these areas. We could probably just run bamboo basic blue in general, and we'll just use a little bit less of it rather than using the chromonal blue. So I'm also gonna add this lighter blue to it just to see, just to give it a little bit more brightness in, in these areas. And then that way, whenever we get to the greener areas, it'll brighten up the green as well. I'm not sure which yellow is gonna be best for this just quite yet, so we shall see. But overall, I think that this will be good. Probably about here. That way we get a little bit more brightness up here. Yeah, so we'll keep it the way that it is right now. I'm not gonna export this project just yet. I'm gonna minimize it and then we'll work on the next one. So same settings, same everything. All we're gonna do is we're gonna add yellow to this. I don't think that I have to have a yellow that's even close to what we're seeing here. I think that, yeah, it looks more orange than anything. And I think that the way that we did the red color spaces, let me bring that up. So because I still have this, that means that this is gonna print out red as well. And so I think that we'll be able to get away with just a light yellow. Uh, that way we can get more of the green effect so that there's more blue, because this green looks a little bit more blue to me. Whenever we go to print this and light shining through, I think that having a lighter yellow will make it look really good and we'll make it look a little bit closer to this. So let's just grab a bright yellow. Overture's highlight yellow is probably fine. And you can see what we're doing here. So. Again, light shining through from underneath. We've got that natural down low, and then we'll be stacking this yellow hue forge on top of this blue hue forge. And when light shines through, we'll get the green areas where everything's matched up. And then where we kept the white spaces in this image, where we kept all these white spaces, that'll be where blue can shine through. So then we'll get it closer to how this background looks, where we've got some blue areas and some green areas. So just the edges will be green, and just a couple or just a few of these panels will be uh green as well. So I think that this is going to look good. So we'll keep this one the way that it is. I think that that looks really good. Again, these are going to be super thin. You can see that they're at 1.76. We might even thin them up a little bit more because we, we really don't need this much thickness. So actually, let's. I'm going to go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it. Uh, I think we could probably cut this in half. The blending area, we can probably cut in half. So let's do 0.72. We'll bring this down just a hair. 
and that looks pretty good. So now in total, we've got 1.2 millimeters. We're gonna do the same thing for blue. And this is probably something that you can play with is different thicknesses for different colors. So something to keep in mind, like because blue is so overpowering here, because it looks more blue, like the shade of green looks more blue than yellow, then you could probably get away with having a thicker blue area. But I think just for example sake and for today, I'm just gonna keep them all about the same. I'm looking at the eyes, so the eyes will shine through just fine into yellow. And then when we do our red to get this orange effect, it should look even better. So now I grabbed another instance of Hue Forge. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're gonna add in red. I do have like a 5.8, yeah, the 5 TD. This has been my go-to red for a very long time. It might even benefit me to use like a 3 TD here so that we have a little more red saturation here. And because this is going to be our top, let's see how black looks. We might have to play around with our brightness adjust. to get it exactly where we want it. That looks pretty decent. What's happening is there are some conflicting areas within the image itself that I can probably go over to fix. So I think that this is about as good as we can get as of right this second. What I'm gonna do off camera for this is I'm gonna go through and bold out all of these edges. That way we don't have all these issues because what's happening is the image that was generated, it's like more of a realistic stained glass. And so because of that, we are seeing all of these, these, uh, like highlights, like as if the sun were shining on it or whatnot. So I'm gonna go through and bold out all of these and that way this topmost hue forge will only have the red showing through. It'll be more separated between red and black. And then once I'm done bolding out the lines, I'll drag it in and then I'll export this hue forge and we'll print it out and it'll be fine. So I'm not gonna do any of that on camera. Just know that I'm about to bold out all of these edges so that it looks a little bit better whenever we actually go to print this. And that might be something that you run into whenever you are um, generating images using AI. So just keep that in mind. I'll go ahead and go do that off camera. And then when we come back, I will have a printed version of this and we can talk about the results. And we're done printing our three part stained glass hue forge this came out freaking cool every time that i've printed these out i'm always amazed at how much blending we can get whenever the light shines through from behind for this hue forge i focused on blending for orange and i focused on blending for green i didn't focus on any purple purple can be a little bit more challenging but it's totally doable luckily with these stained glass hue forge models they're so thin that they don't take that long to print so you're able to prototype pretty quickly i think for this project we could have used a higher td blue to let a little bit more light pass through it. But overall, I think that this project came out great. And remember, whenever you're making your stained glass hue forges, be sure to keep in mind which one is gonna be the top most color for you. That can vary depending on what you're trying to do. You don't always have to stack it blue, yellow, and red. You can change the order in which you are doing that. But just try to keep that in mind when you're doing this so that way you can add that black to the topmost layer so that you have really crisp lines to separate your stained glass. Again, huge shout out to Tom. Go check out his stuff on Maker World. And like I said in the intro of this video, my Patreon members voted on this particular video to be put out next. I have polls over on my Patreon to see what videos you guys want next for tutorials. And my Patreon members get access to my private Discord where we can do one-on-one -on -one help for your Hue Forge project and where we're building a great community full of helpful people. If this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I would greatly appreciate it. And I hope you learned something.